Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing a update video plus the of what's going to be happening. I have a lot of projects that I'm actually planning on doing and I've been uh, organizing myself uh, these past couple days. So I'm going to do this as quickly as possible. First I'm going to give you uh, what are they and then I'm going to go into detail to each one of them. <clears throat> So let's get started. One, we are going to be doing the Fat Shark mod to the Iomways and possibly something called Triversity, which is three receivers into one goggle, which picks up. You can put like two mushrooms in one patch antenna. Okay, so that's one thing we're gonna be doing on the channel. Another thing very important before I move on to the next thing, I ordered the Iomways three days ago and yesterday it said it was shipped. So if you're thinking of getting an Iomway, go jump on it right now. Um, I was surprised also, it's supposed to be coming in next this month, but I was expecting to receive it next month, but it seems like I'm going to be getting it next week. So it said ship, but I still have not received tracking, I don't know. But if you're thinking about it, go ahead and grab one right now, um, like I did. Basically, it was my birthday, and it was between the waveform generator and the Iomways, and I was just been just debating, and I said, forget it, we'll just get the Iomways, it'll be pretty cool for the channel. Uh, if I got the waveform generator, we could have just, like, done some artificial noise, and just, just, oh, it would have been so awesome, and, and just seeing what techniques we could use to uh, decrease noise, and see what frequency affects what kind of noise, get into super specific details on noise. And which is the good noise and which is the bad. There's never any good noise, but you know what I mean. Anyways, let's move on. Next thing. I've been testing these guys. Um, this is the Hack RC or UFO. They're the same ESC, just rebranded. Um, I've set them to 32 kilohertz. Not 48, just 32, not maxed out. And uh, they seem pretty clean, guys. They seem almost as clean as the ESC, ARIA ESCs. However, don't expect performances, you know, uh, hold amperage. Maybe it'll blow up on a 5S. But uh, this so far from my testing seems like it's a good backup cheap ESC um, that I could almost recommend until I do the flight testing, the real world testing. But um, they, they seem good, that, that's for sure, when I increased to 32 kilohertz. So that's something to note, just wanted to just let you guys know just what I've been doing. Because um, I just want to know, so should I add a low ESR capacitor to the waterproof build or not, just ahead of times. Uh, but I'm actually going to do it without, and then we're going to test it and see how it is. So that's another thing we're going to do here. And we're also going to be building a thermal imaging uh, drone finder, which is basically does have a thermal camera. Um, these just came out and just been released uh, for tinkers and DIY projects, which is basically there's three versions of this thermal camera, and it's anywhere between a hundred to three hundred dollars. Some of them, depending on the resolution, and they're super tiny. But they the way they speak is through the SPI protocol, and um, we could easily just hook that up to like a Raspberry Pi and some LCD. And th those are very cheap components. The camera will be the most expensive. But I really want to actually build this drone finder through the heat signature, and as well as program the uh, an object detection system in it. So it'll it'll actually tell you like it thinks it's a drone. So you to walk that way. And um, I do have experience in an uh, object detection. I've done a couple projects for a couple companies. However, you know my code. I'll I'll keep this one completely open source for everyone, so you can play around with it, and it'll be pretty cool. So I'm I'm really really want to get that one done. Um, it's not going to be a budget build, that's for sure. The camera itself is like a hundred or two hundred bucks, depending on which one I'm going to get. I'm saving up for it right now, but um, it's going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, we'll also add the, some parts of our budget build into it so we can monitor RSSI and add a buzzer. Uh, so there will be two basically projects for the DIY drone finder. It will be the super expensive one and the budget one. And um, I think it will be pretty cool and pretty interesting. So let me know what you guys think of that down below in the comments section. And um, it will be pretty cool. So, yeah. Uh, another very important thing that I'm going to leave a link down there below and it's going to be this Arduino package which comes with like buzzers, LEDs, resistors, uh, LCDs, um, I think a microphone or a motion detector, just a lot of crazy things. This package, basically I have one of these packages at home and I have a lot of other parts as well and um, I really want to start you know, doing some, some Arduino videos, like just how to turn on the LED and turn off the LED and uh, use the buttons and stuff because I really want to get you guys into electronics and just, just to open that door for you because I know when I got into it, it completely changed my life and um, it's just, it's an amazing feeling. You could look at electronics and, you know, even if you don't know much knowledge, even when I didn't know much, I could be like, oh, I could try this and try this and when you see it work, it's just the most incredible feeling ever. You just, it's just, I can't explain it. It gives you just that satisfaction it's just it's awesome so i really want to do that for the channel and um i really hope you guys follow on that i'll be doing just step by step we're going to get more advanced and more advanced 
and um, then you know leave you or enable you with every video with enough knowledge to actually go try something out yourself extra or improve upon it and um, that that's going to be very interesting and I think it's going to be very cool for everyone and it's very good to know Arduino these days now because um, almost everything is Arduino really. Um, another thing we're going to be doing an overview video on this guy, uh, this is from Maytech, it's, I got this like about a month ago, they just released the, um, the, 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 the they just released it basically on Banggood, it's not for order just yet, I've had him for a while, I haven't fully thoroughly tested him, but he's a basically a full-fledged flight controller with OSD, it's an F4 processor, F, uh, with the 32K gyro, which is a very sensitive gyro, so if you're using this, you better have good ESCs or a pretty good PDB, um, just in case, so we're going to be testing this guy very soon on the channel. And oh yeah, the Maytech F405 all-in-one flight controllers are being shipped with four low ESR capacitors now. So that's very good for Maytech. I'm very happy that they actually acknowledged it and they are doing something to fix that. So that's very good. You don't have to scour the internet to get your capacitors and to get you going. Now, another thing that you guys have just been killing me about is helping hands. Why don't I use helping hands? Well, I got this for you guys. So, um, I wasn't really going to show this to you guys, but to be honest, it was pretty cool. Like, I've always been eyeballing this thing, but it was so expensive, and now it's like 35 bucks. So, um, I decided to go for it, really. And uh, to be honest, I'm very happy, actually, I did. It, this thing is insane. The amount of, you know, flexibility, and it's just, you know, it beats any helping hands I've ever used before, that's for sure. Uh, when it comes, it comes, the arms are cut in two pieces, well not cut in two pieces, this is, you could remove any of the, how many you want, so you could extend or decrease the size of each arm, and when I got them, I got them basically half, all of them, so when I went to go put them together, it took so much force uh, to put it <laughs> together that, um, that I had to rest between them because I was weak to go put the second one, you know if you use all your, just, just use all your strength and you get weak for a little bit and you just have to wait a little bit um that, that actually happened to me while putting this together so this thing is actually pretty insane it's gonna be pretty cool so when i'm soldering here it'll give you a very good you know you can see everything i'm doing and it's not getting in the way and the camera's picking it up very nice and beautiful especially with the lighting behind me here and um yeah it'll be pretty cool so i really do like this and um i to be honest i, I would do highly recommend it if you're a tinker or it's 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 very good it, it holds very well I mean, look at the amount of pressure I could place on this guy. That's a lot of pressure. And I have them sticking out, so if I put them... Look at this. That sound is fine. That's the plastic. I don't, I don't know. It makes that kind of sound. So, or hopefully it's not the VTX. Um, anyways, so this thing is pretty cool. Um, it's, I think it's on sale now. I don't know why they dropped the price, but it's like 35 bucks. It even comes with a USB fan to... Um, you could completely remove this with just one screw and you still have an arm down there so you, you know you didn't waste the whole arm that could have grabbed something for a fan so uh, i really do like this and this has some upgrades and stuff i haven't really looked into it but it seems like it's like modular based so that's that's awesome the base is pretty heavy so it'll keep its balance pretty well and what are we gonna do oh yeah um for receivers and latency testing um we have the QX7 versus the Trinity coming up very soon. I'll show you guys um, their latency. First, the IBUS latency and the SBUS latency. And then from the point of throttle, this time we're going to do actual throttle, uh, not through a switch, because I read that these have a separate encoder, which enc encodes the data and then passes it to the CPU and then passes it to the, uh, we could say, the chipset, the RF chipset, which is the... Um, the wireless feed or for wireless broadcasting chip whatever and then it gets to your receiver so we're going to actually test it from these guys and i figured out a way to do this correctly just like that so it's going to be pretty cool we're going to do this on this guy on this guy and the x7s and i've actually wrote banggood to uh if they could basically provide me with it with the horus the X10, I think, the X10, yeah, and uh, they agreed, and they shipped it, so it should be here next week, so that's going to be pretty cool, so we're actually going to be doing that, and also got my hands on the Spectrum, well, I have a follower, and his name is Kyle, he was super awesome, and he has, he just told me, he said, hey, listen, I have a couple of those uh, Spectrum satellites and uh, Spectrum research radios, and if you're interested, I'll, uh, I'll be more than happy to exchange with you. And I, I, I said, of course. So we've exchanged his products. I gave him a couple things I have in the house. And he sent me the the radio, the Spectrum radio. So we're also going to have that in the mix of testing. And also have the FlySky 
uh, i6 and the i6X also will also do those and we're possibly going to do some mods on the FlySky receivers such as a external battery which is like a LiPo uh, so you could just put a rechargeable battery in it and also amplification 1000 watt amplification to the radio signal so we can get hell of a long range um, I've been wanting to do that for a while but I do have the components for it and we might do that if you guys are interested in that and well that's really it I think right now yeah well that that's really it uh, maybe this guy if you guys are interested in this guy this is the mocha I know a lot of people saw it in the previous video and were just asking about it this is the mocha Jadina and I'll be doing a frame overview and the flight footage very soon I have not flown it and um, I just built it for my birthday I just wanted to nice and relax just to myself with no camera in my face um, and um, yeah I just took my time with this guy came out very beautiful the carbon is very good it's not the lightest it's not the heaviest and um, I don't know what to expect however you know it's adjustable so you can make it into a V-tail it's pretty crazy I'll show you the guys that in the overview but on um, the carbon is good carbon I could guarantee you on that because um one millimeter of this with foam and another millimeter is holding up to some pretty damn hard crashes which is the mocha simplex that we built that one's still a beast and that's really it yeah that's it guys so if you guys have any questions or any suggestions um feel free to let me know and i will see you next time see you guys take care